Here's my Sega Saturn. I don't use my Sega Saturn all that often. I looked at my YouTube channel and I haven't done a video for this for about seven or eight years. But I am going to do a video today and it's going to be of Tomb Raider. I don't really like these cases that a lot of Sega Saturn games come in because they're just a piece of cardboard that's glued to two pieces of plastic. So if you look here, it really is just a piece of cardboard. And so they're not really protected very well. And not all cases are like that. Some cases are just completely plastic, like this one. So perhaps it's just the earlier games that are made out of cardboard. Actually, I should say for people that don't know, this cartridge is a memory backup cartridge. Some games support saving directly to this, uh, but some games don't. But what you do with a Sega Saturn normally is you would save the game to internal memory. I'm going to set up my Saturn and I'm going to play some Tomb Raider. That is the style of controller I'm using, and those are the controls. I do press the wrong buttons every now and then, because I'm not used to using a Sega controller. Well, for 3D games, anyway. We have now entered the world of Lara Croft. I don't know why that piece of wood warps so much. See, it was quite difficult to see that ramp until you got close to it. But I think that might be because these older 3D games don't really have any lighting effects. They don't really have proper lighting, do they? I have that med kit that I had to get in exactly the right spot to pick up. I think they've done a fairly good job of making this game look interesting even though it is pretty clear at points that maps are made out of blocks like everything's made out of squares and cubes and things and actually the Sega Saturn can only draw squares as well can't it? But that's the thing that's quite common in 3D games for quite a few years that everything was just made out of squares and I guess that's just a memory saving thing. Maybe it was just easier to make geometry using squares than complicated angles and things.
Oop, ran into a wall there. One of the buttons lets you do a free look, but when you're doing that, you can't move. So you can't really, um, it's not like having a mouse by your side or a right analog stick like controllers have nowadays. I might end up falling down there, so I take the walls out. Using auto aim, which is not optional, this game does just use auto aim for its combat. I think the combat is probably the weakest thing about the game because you just stand there and shoot until things are dead or sort of jump around. You might have noticed the game slows down quite a lot in this room. This is something that happens every now and again in the Saturn version of Tomb Raider. It doesn't happen in the PlayStation version. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they started Tomb Raider on the Saturn and the PlayStation at the same time. But they can't be exactly the same because you'd have to completely reprogram it for, for each console. Yeah, I don't really know. Um, but what I was going to say, it is quite well known that this particular version of Tomb Raider came out three months before the PlayStation version. So I don't know if it's less optimised or if it's just the nature of the Saturn that has more slow down. That music's still playing, and it made me think there were still enemies to kill. But I think when that music triggers, it just plays the entire track before it finishes. A little bit of platforming to do here. So you see I take a step back there before I jump. That is something that they teach you in the tutorial. So you've got jumps that you can make uh, by just jumping. You've got running jumps you can do. And you can do running jumps where you grab the ledge after it as well. And uh, so everything is reachable. Unless it's not reachable. So I think it is actually worth playing the tutorial just to sort of see what they were going for because the game was designed around all of that, of course. And now we're on to level two. There's more bloody wolves to kill. I thought I was in here to collect treasure, not to kill animals. I hope they're not some rare species that's been living in these caves for thousands of years.
I'm just admiring the scenery. <laughs> This is the first time you swim in water outside of the tutorial. And being on the surface of the water makes Lara go all wibbly. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I don't know what the point of this room is. Is it just a dead end? They could have put something in there. But for a first swimming section, this is really quite long. But thankfully, the swimming controls are easier than you might think. You do have to line up this switch. If you miss that switch, it is quite hard to adjust yourself. I must admit I did get very stuck in this area the first time. I played this before I recorded the video, but what I did the first time around is that I pulled that block instead of pushing it, and I pulled it into that previous room, and then I just ran through. And when I got on the other side, I couldn't work out what to do after that. <laughs> So it's amazing how something that is actually fairly simple can just completely stump you. Or maybe I'm just completely stupid. Oh, wrong button. Ah, ah, so this is a key for later on. It does just look like a collectible, but it's a key for later on. And this is another key for later on. I've got to say, really, in the limited experience I have with the Sega Saturn, I've sort of come to my own conclusion that it's basically the same as the PlayStation. 
and you know people can crawl about fill rates and polygons per second and all that sort of thing but ultimately there's a lot of games on the saturn that are also on the playstation they are the same game Uh, i mean there are a few small differences like for instance you don't get quite as much texture warping on the saturn Picked up some shotgun shells there. Oh shit. In this game you really do have to be careful when you walk off a ledge. There I am admiring the slowdown again. So I've skipped ahead a little bit to later on. Um, This is still level two though. And someone's put a bear in this room. And he's really angry with me for some reason. Oh my god. I swear, every time I tried to get out of the water here, it was just as the bear was walking past. Look, he's going to do it again. See? Bloody bear. Alright, I've skipped ahead here to level 3. And um, there is a shotgun to collect at the top of the waterfall. I accidentally went in the water and the current just took me over the edge. And I don't think I can get back up there, so I missed out. But but yeah, I I think they did a really good job of this. I mean, core design was a very small company. I think they split off from Gremlin at some point, which was uh, one of the bigger British software development companies. Um, And Core was just like a little offshoot of that. They went ahead and produced one of the most popular franchises of the 90s, just like that. And this was one of the first fully 3D games as well alongside Super Mario 64 and Crash Bandicoot. Two out of three of those were from fairly unknown developers as well. This game ended up selling seven million copies. But I don't know how many of that was on the Saturn. I'd imagine not that many. So yeah, I'm going to end it here on this dinosaur fight. The video is already slightly over 20 minutes long and I don't like my videos to be too much longer than about 20 minutes. In fact, quite a lot of people stop watching my videos after about 1 minute 30 seconds. So uh, so thank you if you're still watching at this point. And that's the end of the video.